Is this thing on? Welcome to another episode of the Whiskey Entitled. All right, so here we go. Today, we're going to be talking about the whiskey bubble, whether or not it is a thing, whether or not it's a bubble, and whether or not it's going to sustain itself forever. Um, that said, apparently, I forgot to go grab the bottles for the show today. So Charles is going to roll the credits, and then I'm going to disappear, and he's going to serenade you with the beautiful sound of his sweet voice. All right. So while Wally runs off in to uh, get his bottles, um, yeah, so this week's topic was brought to you by the Whiskey Watch, who's on Instagram. Uh, he's usually a regular in the chat, so you might want to see him there. Um Every Monday, I usually do uh, on my Instagram a topic to suggest in the Drinking Caveman. So if you guys want to give a topic, please let us know over there. Um, so this week's episode, we're going to talk about the whiskey bubble and is it ready to pop? Um, you guys have probably been seeing on Instagrams and, and YouTube and Facebook and stuff about all these expensive bottles and how they've tripled, quadrupled in price. And um, do we see a downturn? Um, it'd be great to get uh, Wally's input because he's been there for a couple of years. I've been... I want to say collecting, but at least gathering bottles for the last couple of years. And I definitely see a bit of a boom, especially with the Japanese market and how um, limited releases, painted bottles, or age statements going away. So um, I definitely see that's going to change. But um, yeah, hopefully we get a topic soon. Um, this week, since uh, it is a whiskey show, I'm drinking the Habiki Harmony today. Uh, I kind of knocked this one just because I love the 12, but... Um, since the 12 is almost non-existent nowadays, it's kind of the go-to for Hibiki lovers. So um, that's what I'm drinking. And Wally, still picking up some stuff. He's got a few things. So um, people in chat, say something. How you guys doing? Go Habs, how you doing, bud? Glad to have you in. People are starting to roll in now. Wally's just putting things. Yes, humans. What's up? We are humans. humans? What? Now, uh, Who's humans? Jason Whiskey Wise, I think he's human. I don't know. Pressman, how you doing, bud? Um, while he's just fixing his hair right now. I don't know why. What? Am I? Is that what I'm doing? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I told him what my bottle I'm drinking. What is in your glass today, my friend? Oh, in my glass, which is this new fancy schmancy, ridiculously expensive. We're going to do a review about a glass. Um, it's just some blends. Okay. So how wide is that glass? Because you could fit a Blanton's topper in there. Wide enough? To, yeah, exactly. But that's why. Like wide enough to put your nose. And I'm not going to knock um, Denver Lally for what they do. But I would like to ask them later and probably maybe an interview scenario or whatever. What made them think about changing the glass? Because everyone thinks the Glencairn is probably one of the most perfect glasses you can get. It's So, so the Glencairn is really, really, really close yeah. if I had to be a thousand percent honest. I will continue to use Glencairns and, and Glencairn Copita glasses. Sure until the, the cows come home because the Glencairn Copa is 12 bucks, the Glencairn $6. <clears throat> the thing that gets me about their glasses, do I think it enhances the flavor because you can retrohale easier yeah. because your nose and your mouth are both exposed to it? Absolutely. But do I think it's worth $50? Okay. It's okay, tough. We drop down to 15. 15? Would you pick it over the Glencairn? So here's the irony. If they dropped it to 15, I'd buy three. <laughs> If they dropped it to 25, I'd still probably buy a pair. So, so that's, the that, that's what's weird, right? Like, what made them do this? Like, I understand that bourbon notes are different than scotch notes. That makes sense, right? Steve. But For the record, to be clear, so that it's not hashtag ad, Denver and Lightly did send me this glass for free. They sent me the other one for free also. So I guess we should be a 1,000% honest and clear. But I'm telling you. As a, there's another Instagrammer out there who is like, how can you have this glass and then tell people that it costs too much money and that it's not worth the price? I'm telling you as 100% honest me, if I had to buy it, I told you what I would spend, obviously. Yeah. But to me, the glasses were $25, not 50. At $50, you're asking too much. And when I meet them this Saturday, I'm going to tell him to his face, I think $50 is too much, sell them for 25. So for everybody out there thinking like Steve, like, man, he's really showing that glass yeah. off. It's because it's huge, and in this case, more convenient than the regular one. Just an FYI, guys, I paid for this with my own monies. Wally did not send me the shit. So this is not hashtag ad. It's still a cool glass, though. So if you can, go find and grab one. I don't know where he's selling it now, but if you ask nicely, he probably has some stash somewhere. Yeah, I do. You just hit the DM me. I did pay for this one. Crazy story. I did not pay for this one. So just to let you know, 
I did buy one. <laughs> oh man, oh, man. Both of them. Which one? Steve will be in. Oh, will they both be there? there? Yes, because I need to interview them in front of the Golden oh, Gate which, Bridge. There will be videos. Which glass or which person? Smith. I only think one person's going. Oh, I don't know if it'll be Denver or Lila. I think I talked to Denver most yeah. of the time. But um, their glass will be there. Um, and we'll get to try the bourbon glass, which is going to be pretty cool. I'm probably going to knock it real hard if it doesn't enhance it because – I'm a big and, I'm a big bourbon fan, and if it doesn't enhance it, then what's the point? That's the thing. So, like, getting to get your nose in it at the same time, it, it, it's going to help. But he said he has, like, a way of breaking down the science for how it works. And the, the only interesting thing I've ever heard was actually from Tracy of Glenfiddich about retrohaling, yeah. which usually I think of cigars. But when you do it with whiskey, you can also enhance the flavor because you're smelling also on top of tasting at the same time. So... 1920s blenders glasses, uh-huh. Jason whiskey wise, those are really expensive, and I've thought about buying one, and getting it shipped here. But man, is that glass expensive? Yeah, to be honest, I know everyone's gonna talk about the glass. But it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's always about the whiskey, right? Glass does it's does enhance about- it, but unless it's gonna give you a massage and a back scrub, and it's gonna cost you know hundred dollars, uh, I don't know, man. I know for fifty bucks, that's what I'm saying. Like fifty bucks, that that's the part that's hard to justify. Like, is it that much better than a regular Glencairn? Is it forty-four dollars better? Yeah, but and yeah. you know, don't get me wrong. I'm super thankful that they send me a free glass. But at the same time, like I, I tell everybody who sends me anything for free, I'm gonna give my honest opinion. I'm sorry, Sir Duncan. Is that person gonna be there? Let's get Sir yeah. Duncan. Let's get drunk and not photograph anything in San Francisco. Who's Sir Duncan? Malton Barley. Yeah, that's a f- fancy name. Sir Duncan. Greetings, Charles. I'm like, hey, Richie. <laughs> um, but check on our Instagram. We'll definitely be talking about this glass when they pop it out. So you'll get pretty non-paid opinions and hopefully that's what they're asking for too right that's what they're you know that's what they want they want honest opinions with stuff they i think they spent quite a bit of time trying to design that glass so it's got to do something so we'll see we'll see so yeah so today's topic bubbles uh i is, is there a whiskey bubble should i should i've heard of one yeah so um so this was brought to us by the Whiskey Watch, um, singing about Whiskey Bubble. Now, if I'm thinking about the Whiskey Bubble as he's thinking about it, is how crazy <sighs> secondary prices are happening right now. Macallan number one, for instance, what's $700 for a bottle, and it was retailed for 110 120 It retailed for $99. I will drink all of this. Yeah. It is good, but it's not $700 good. Yeah. So that, and then you got... The older brother of this one, the Hibiki 12, the 17, the 21 that is not discontinued yet, but might be, the 30, anything basically Japanese. Oh, I should have brought the 30 what sample out. there? Um, you got uh, George T. Staggs, you got the whole Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, you got the Pappies. So you got some bottles going <laughs> into that bubble, right? That's kind of where. Shotgun it. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. Sorry, I got distracted by chat. I didn't know what I should shot to on a drama of if it's the Mac number one or the Hibiki 21, but I don't really like throw shots back, so. That's an expensive shot, man. That's way yeah. too expensive. But yeah, so um, I honestly think that there, there is no real bubble because they're collectibles, right? You got to think about it as a collector and not just a consumer. Because. Okay, so, so to the guy who's buying it, yeah. then there's definitely a bubble. Well. But to the guy who's buying it on the secondary, I, I wouldn't a say it's a bubble because a bubble means it's going to burst. It's not going to burst, man. They're collectibles. So y- you don't think at any point in time this will ever go down in value? You think seven hundred bucks is where it's at forever? Just because they, they're or not, higher. they can't remake it again. There's, there's no. The only way you can get it now is old stock of what the bottles were, and it's the market driving it. So the only way that I can see it burst is if the market stops. But there's, if you look at Instagram, half the people you're most likely following. Are all collectors you don't see them with open bottles maybe the open bottle they have is a buffalo trace like a 30 dollar bottle you don't see them opening up their thousand dollar bottles or anything like that that's which <laughs> that's that's the worst which is sad but that that's how it is right people like to flex people like to show how much they do stuff like you open it but how many people have you seen with a crap load of snow phoenixes and just not opening them yeah I, so me personally i don't feel as though there's a bubble oh my gosh first because thinking about this way the McCallans that um, was it the, was it Scotch Whisperer? No, no, it's it's um, Scotch Father, Godfather, whatever. Scotch Father, he's got crazy yeah, McCallans. Yeah, those McCallans, right? And that's yeah, the years. two that sold for one point two. They're just going to go up in price. I don't think True. that bubble is going to burst, but 
there are certain I, other whiskeys that I think might burst. Like I think the like the Buffalo Tree stuff, since they're releasing every every year, you can see a devaluation of certain things. But those McCallums that are that are one time offshoots, some of the Pappies, they don't go out of style. And they won't. You said, you said Buffalo Trace stuff? Antique collection. <laughs> not the Pappies. I haven't found the right occasion to open this yet. So if anybody's wondering why this is actually closed, I finished one and I'm just waiting for the right one for the second so one. So what, what do you think? Well, because I know I think you're you're thinking different than I am. This, this, this is literally almost gone though. Thanks for sharing, by the way. Oh my gosh, yes. The 15. So hot, but still tasty. Not so as good as the So what do you think? Do you think the, there is a bubble, and is it going to pop? That's probably the first real question. Then we'll get to um, whiskey, uh, whiskey I watch the second one. I think I missed your first question, which is actually, did you buy any bottles this weekend? Yes, I bought a limited edition bottle. So this is perfect for what's going on. You're right. So this, the guy, huh? The, oh, the guy who started Redemption Rye, yes. um, him and his buddy, one of the guys decided he would bottle a 12-year-old MGP mm -hmm. and call it the Ambassador at Barrel Proof. So this is at least 12-year-old whiskey. Redemption Rye is the one by the Under Armour dude, right? No, that's well, um, Sagam no, that's Sagam yeah, that's Redemption. Right? So Redemption is a different group of people. I forget the guy's actual name, but this is called the Ambassador. It's at least twelve year old bourbon. Um, I tried some at Jack Rose. It tastes like rye. It's super high rye in the mash bill. It has to be, and um, it's one bottle of six thousand. But I'm telling you, sometimes I don't think there is a bubble because I went to my local spot. Yeah. Where I have a really good relationship with my local store guy, and he literally gave me. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this. Like. Let's just say he gave me a hefty discount on the price. Like I think MSRP is 140, mm -hmm. and I want to say that I paid much closer to two digits than three. Okay. So just throwing it out there. So I want like, to say it about maybe I, paid maybe I, 70 bucks, 80 bucks for it. Don't you don't have to say anything? Maybe like I'm just saying. Maybe, That's why a, little, I maybe a little more. Yeah. But, <laughs> but like it's just crazy because you know this is supposed to be this limited edition thing. There's only 6,000 bottles, and that's pretty low, you know, in the whole world. But yeah. Well, it's cast strength, right? I, I so know. that makes sense why it's so low. Yeah, cast strength 12 MGP. Yeah. So that's kind of weird. But you can get old scout that's cast yeah. strength and 12 And, that, years and that's old. why I think it's it goes hand in hand, right? The bubble is not just just the brand, not just the age of the whiskey or whatever or the quantity. It's also the brand, right? So you got to think about all those ones that are that I call bubble whiskeys are going to be like the Macallans, the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection stuff, maybe the Pappy Van Winkles. The limited edition Highland Park kind of stuff, all those kind of stuff that go up in value because everyone wants them and they're limited edition and they have their name or value to it. So, but it, I mean, is it everybody that wants it or? I think it's just collectors and okay. investors. I think that's where it is. So, Jason Whiskey Rise is bringing up a really, really good point that I thought a million right. times. So, here's the problem. So, you have these brands and they're riding this wave because everybody wants some, right? And then what's going to happen is that it's going to fall out of style or favor or whatever okay. you want to call it. Like even right now in Scotland, everybody will tell you that gin is what's in, in style. Well, gin's always so, been like, in hot countries anyway, so I've always seen it. If, if whiskey falls out of favor and then it goes back to what it was doing before, okay. we'll have the glut we had. I mean, obviously it was before we were born, but I hear that there was a glut in the 70s yeah. and 80s. There was more whiskey than there were buyers. So when you have way too much supply and not enough demand, you're going to get the prices to flip and the bubble will die. So and burst. I, I can see that – so in my opinion, I can see that as an overall whiskey thing, right? Like whiskey will flip over and go to rum or gin or another. It will go follow that trend, right? Yeah. But for me, the bubble characteristics or the bubble bottles are the premium bottles that they only have 100, 300, 1,000. Those will go up in no, no matter what because there's always going to be a collector that wants more or to show I have a bigger wallet than someone else. So I don't think the bubble for like, do you think the the million dollar McCallans that sold are gonna ever go back down to lower than a million? I think so. So I think so. When it comes to really really yeah. expensive bottles, it's like really expensive cars. Yes, it's gonna fluctuate because it comes down to um, a collector dying and they have to sell it for less yes. because the people who don't know, or it'll come down to that person just wants to get rid of it and they paid way less, so they're willing to take less for it. So the value really is determined by what somebody's willing yeah. to pay, and it's always going to be different. But at the same time, it's like because it has precedent that it's sold yeah. for that much, you just have to find another buyer that's willing to pay that. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually worth that much forever. It just and, means it's worth that, that much. And that doesn't right mean now. that the bubble is gonna that pops just because that one guy had to offshoot a bunch of it, right? Correct. So and that. And it doesn't mean there's a real bubble so just because one guy paid a lot. The only time that – and this is where Whiskey Watch, if you're listening, man, this is where you're going to tell me you told I told you so. When Hibiki 12s go back in stock in the next five years or whatever, and then the price for 
uh, Hibiki 12s of the older generation drop down in price, then you can tell me you told them so. Because that's the only real justification I can see. Is if this year, like let's say 2015's Hibiki 12 is going to be less than the Hibiki 12 in what? 2022, 2025, whenever they're going to back in stock. So here's the problem with that. Hibiki is a blend. So if the blend can keep its blend going, maybe that'll happen to the value. Or maybe it'll be like McAllen cast strength. Classic cut, not as great as the old cast strength, especially if you love classic sherries. Cast strength, like, is rising through the ceiling constantly. People want four, five, six hundred dollars now, and that's where I don't see the bubble. Classic yeah. cut is still on the shelf for a hundred bucks, and that's where I, I, I just don't see a bubble burst. I, I think it's more of a, a big balloon, per... not a real bubble that's waiting to pop. But like, it's a <laughs> balloon that's just going there, and I don't think it has a limit yet. Maybe it's a hot air balloon in, instead of we're thinking about it as a little toy balloon. Yeah. Interesting. That, that's just my opinion, though. Know. But yeah, let us know in your comments and um, suggestions. We'll look through and if, hit us up on Instagram as well. And uh, let us know what you guys. I think. mean, because like literally the bottles that we have here. You go for it. You're talking about. I mean, this this is only rising yeah. right now. Hibiki is only rising, like, um, which is nuts. Which is crazy because like, like what this, two years I, ago I was buying them I, for ninety bucks, the twelve. Yeah, no, or less well, than 90, 60 two years. Two years ago, I was buying this for three hundred. It's the twenty one. So six hundred. It was still expensive. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it's crazy expensive now. And then you've got like stinking the Snow Phoenix, which I thought. I might be buying for a little too much at a little over 500 bucks, yeah. but these are going for stupid amounts of money. Like, I don't know. And then some you can't predict. Like, if you told me the McAllen number one would ever be worth 700 bucks, I tell you you're on oh, drugs. Yeah, I would have bought a crap like, case. People are buying cases exactly. now at four, which is crazy. I'm sure somebody did. You know? I'm sure somebody did buy cases yeah. and they're getting rid of them now. That, that person's smart. So, but that person, you can't yeah. predict that, though. You can't know what's going to hit. So, what, Jason? Uh, was it, yeah, is it Jason? Yeah, Jason with uh, whiskey companies innovating and stuff like that. I just don't. I don't think innovation is going to be leading to that. I think innovation just because they're stuck in a bubble of their own kind of stuff and they want something different and unique. And they're seeing smaller and smaller distilleries do these experimentations and taking a bigger or a smaller piece of their pie. So they're exp- doing these experimentations now because they've got the core range. They know how to make it well. They know how to make it efficiently. So that's what they're going to sell. But you got Glenfiddich now with that fire and cane that's coming out, that unique blend that they came up with, right? You got McAllen coming out with their more affordable different collections with the number series. So you got all these different companies. They're experimenting just because they can't expand their portfolio enough. And investors, and more importantly, their directors are like saying, hey, we need to make more money. How can we tap into different markets? That's funny because like with Glenfiddich, you can see – so with McAllen, these additions are going for crazy money. Like right now, there's a set of one, two, three, and four. They're not even done with the set yet. One, two, three, and four. I saw somebody posted for sale for a thousand pounds today, mm-hmm. and I don't know if they'll get it. I decided to follow it because yeah. I was like, man, this is gonna be crazy if that's what happens. But like, you can't know what's gonna hit because if you look at Glenfiddich, it's the other way around. Glenfiddich, the first one was IPA. No one cares. I thought it tasted great, but it wasn't a big deal. The second one was Project the 20. Um, Project Twenty. I like that one. A lot of people like loved it, but it wasn't. But it's not so rare that all of a sudden people are like no. buying it for a bajillion dollars because there's enough supply to, to meet the demand. One. So it shows you what the real demand is. And then the third one, the supply was so short yeah. that there was no way that it could have got to with demand. So it raised the prices even though no one had tasted yeah. it. And that to me is the saddest thing about any of this whiskey bubble. It's like to the people who are willing to pay $2,000 for this, I, I don't understand yeah. it. I understand it for $1,000 because our pockets are different. But to the people willing to pay $2,000 for this, I don't get it. But at the same time, do I understand where that market comes yeah. from because the supply is low and demand is super high? Yeah, I absolutely understand yeah, well, that. And that's all that it is, like Jason's explaining. Well, what's sad is like for me right now, I did not like the number three expression of uh, Glenn Fittick, the Winter Storm. But I want one now to fill up that gap because I'm going to have one, two, not going to have three. Just for the collectability, not for the so drinkability. So if you have an empty bottle, let me know because I like to put it on my shelf. So I have, <laughs> I have an extra one, but it's there. full. So, but to be honest, like I've had it and I thought I liked it. I, I just wasn't a fan. And I love this experimentation, though. I, I want bigger companies to do this, but smaller companies are doing it too. And I'm feeling as though that we, being you know on our soapbox and talking to people and trying to educate people, I kind of want to move more towards that now for my personal growth, just because. There's so many great smaller distilleries coming out now that have some great stuff that we just don't see because we're focusing on the more expensive, the rare stuff because that gets views, likes, and so on. So I mean, my problem with – so I'll do smaller distilleries for like a week on Instagram, but my problem with smaller distilleries is inconsistency. Yeah. So yeah. I would love – so that – okay, this will give you a perfect example. In the very beginning with Scotch and Sniff, I found a local distillery that had a product that I really, really enjoyed. 
it was batch like nine of whatever this product was. And I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to buy more. So I went out and bought another one and it was batch 10. I opened it not knowing it was batch 10 and it tasted like garbage. Uh And I was like, why does this taste so bad? And I looked at the two and I noticed the batch numbers were different. And I was like, does it make that big of a difference? So they came out with another one. I went and bought another one. It was batch 11, also garbage. So it was just a lot of garbage coming from this local Virginia distillery, not Virginia distillery, the distillery, but a local distillery in Virginia that was just not doing a good job. And so like in terms of supply and demand, they can make all kinds of supply, but if there's no demand there because nobody wants it, it doesn't matter. Plus they don't don't go past your borders most of the time, right? They usually go to like maybe the outlying states around it and that's it. So when you try, when you do find a great one, and if it is just to buy batch, then it's always hard. But no, I, I, yeah, I understand. I understand. Worst part about small distilleries. So, um, a lot of small distilleries just can't make that much to meet any kind yeah. of demand. No, I, it just sucks. Like that, but like that's. I, I just feel as though that we're not tapping into that market, and I feel as though that they're not reaching out because either they're selling out because they're at small batches because they're only like what three hundred bottles, something like that, four hundred bottles. So. I mean, depending on size yeah. of barrel. But yeah, uh, any other questions on our topic, guys, let us know in the comments. Thank you so much to Whiskey Watch again for that topic. Um, yeah, I guess we kind of had the same thing where certain bottles we can feel as a bubble. But I like. do you think – and I know this is probably maybe changing a bit of um, Steve's topic, but do you? what do you think is the next one going to be? If it's if it's not whiskey, what do you think? Do you think it's going to be gin? I don't – I no, rum? I think if it's going to be anything, I think so. Look, look at Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. They're hedging their bets against yeah. rum, and I don't blame them, but they're trying to charge like $250 for a bottle yeah. of rum, and I don't care how old it is and how good it tastes. Like, that's that's crazy for rum. When I can buy a quality rum for 100 bucks, that tastes amazing. I mean, but this is all, again, this is pre demand. Yeah. So if there if a demand really comes, then yeah, yeah no, now's yeah, the yeah. time. Now is the time to buy. But if there's no demand that actually shows up, then people are just hedging their bets against nothing, and it's a dumb so, bet. Uh, yeah, Jason feels the same thing as rum. When I was in Asia, gin, man, it was everything was gin based. It was crazy, and I'm not a big gin fan, but I mean, wow, some of the cocktails they make with that stuff is just mind blowing. Everything is so cyclical. I really do agree with Steve on this. Like, it, yeah. eventually, it will just wane. Yeah. It can't wax forever. It'll eventually wane, and when it does, that'll be the time to buy whiskey. You know, because for a while it's not going to happen. For a while, there will be a bunch of investors on the front edge of that trying to catch that wave, but that wave will be going down for a while. And then who knows when it'll come back up again. But that's, I mean, again, that's all just conjecture and, and predictions that no one can make. The cognac's turn, huh? A whiskey lock is coming again? Oh, I, cognac. Cognac. cognac I always thought, for to me, me, is yeah. more of a. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to talk about like the production of cognac. Oh. So in whiskey, at least you can save the heads and tails, rerun them through the still and use them again. But in cognac, when you use grapes, when you make that, the heads and the tails have some kind of chemical in them. If you, you them, yeah. distill them a second time, you'll literally kill people. Yeah, I saw that. So like in terms of their losses for creation, it's, it's pretty high. Yeah, like, and I, I still, and this is like people probably be like, oh, I think whiskey is the same way. I, I still think cognac is definitely a more richer person's drink. For some reason, I don't know why. It's just that that connotation. It could be the Louis, Louis Vuitton. Then it's time to break into it. Then it's time to just like what we did with whiskey. Like it's time to break into it and make it a regular person's yeah. thing. Then I don't know. I just look at Martel Ford on blue. Yeah. So good. But, so and cheap. then like I know a couple years ago it was tequila was a big thing. The whole purities and tequila and all that kind of stuff. But that stuff just confused the shit out of me. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, tequila. There's only one tequila that I like, and it's like stinking expensive. Um. Oh yeah, I forgot. You got a bottle. I got a bottle and, today. This is. Was given to me, so I'll let you guys know. And you guys probably seen this on my Instagram stories. Roaming man. Oh, the yeah. roaming man. I saw that. It looks Dude, pretty this cool. Box, I like the this box. Box alone, man. Like packaging. I, I know I'm a sucker for packaging, but like that was amazing. It looks like a perfume box. But and I and I've showed this on the stream, and I'm, I'll show this to you, man. But like, the information, the amount of information on this thing is just, it just makes me yeah, happy. Yeah, no, the disclosure disclosure was wow, incredible. Like it tells you the mash bill, percentage of rye corn and malted barley. The batch number, the evaporation percentage, which evaporation percentage, man. Like, look at that. So I haven't tried it, so I can't give a review on how good it is. I did review their, um, I think it's the batch four, and it was spicy. It was rye goodness. It was something I really needed and wished I had in the Philippines, but sadly, I did not bring that one. So I'm excited to share this with the Instagrammers over in San Francisco. If you guys are there early, let me know on Friday. I. I have to ask, because Steve has posted this twice, and not neither time 
I kind of glossed over it, but I don't understand what it is. What's a whiskey lock? Is he talking about like how we're locking it down? Like lock is like a lake in Scotland, so it's a whiskey lake. I'm so confused. What are you guys' favorite rums? Richie Z, if you have to drink a rum, listen to me. Papa's Pilar, Sherry Cask Finish, absolutely phenomenal. Um, Navazos Palazzi, Oloroso Cast Strength, Oloroso Sherry Finish, or Aged, rather. That stuff is bombing. Um, See you, Jason. What other ones do I have to have? Zacapata, like, Zacapata, whatever it's called. Sweeney, oh, Zacapa? Zacapa. I have Zacapa 23. 23. It's okay. They, they, have an, they have an older one that's better. But the 23, is it's all Solera Aged, yeah. so it's not real. Um What's the other one? Oh, Kirk and Sweeney 23. It's nothing magical, but it tastes great. Those are like, if I had, if I needed go-to rums that I needed to spend some money on tomorrow, those would be it. Oh, Foursquare. So Foursquare, if you can find it, Foursquare, it's supposed to be like the jam of the jam. See, and and what's crazy is the laws and rums are so different too. The age on the bottle, uh, the number on the bottle doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean a thing. It's really weird for a person that's into whiskeys and you see a number and you're like, oh, it's this. And it's like, no, it, it just means it has some of it. Maybe a little bit. Oh, I, I've had Apple Appleton Twelve Estate, and it was okay. I had for Nothing that's the right home. Hmm. I'm trying to look at my other rums. There's a couple the other one, and then I have a plantation rum somewhere. The huge amount of whiskey they produced in the 1970s they couldn't sell. That was called the whiskey lock. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that there was a name for that, but yeah, no, I remember reading that they couldn't sell it in that time. Which is weird because you'd think today, like, they can't keep it on the shelves. So it'll come around. It's a cycle like anything else. Just who knows how many years that cycle will roll. High five, Steve. You stumped Wally. <laughs> Just be ready to find that next time, though. Like, for us, it's a good thing because if the bubble bursts and whiskey gets cheap again, oh. that means a glut of supply. For those of us who know what we like, oh my God. like, this is why developing your palate is so important. For those of us who know what we like, just hoard what you like. Don't buy everything on the shelf because it's on the shelf and you know it was valuable at one time. That's stupid. But if you like a thing, you can't go wrong because if it goes up in value, you can sell it if you need the money. But if it doesn't ever go up in value, you already like it anyways. Yeah, That's the Imagine best. just a bunch of Bob Blair 90s just popping out. Oh, my gosh. Just like, just like it's, 10, it's $20 a pop. I'm like uh, – or If, if Bob Blair 90 was $20 a pop, I would have a 1000 Bal- Belvini 21 or any, any Portwood Belvini, I would just be like, yes. <laughs> Oh, you don't need it anymore? I'll oh take the goodness. barrel. This is fine. It would be go. so nuts. Yeah. Yeah, Scotch Votary. The Pillar oh, Rooms are pretty nothing. stinking great. Oh, I don't know. I guess I guess you're sharing. Your, I don't know what's it's happening. Did you plug something yeah, in? Yeah, I plugged in, I guess. <laughs> oh, is yeah. that what happened? Oh, that was so... No one saw it, but you. So, yeah. No, but I agree with us. Oh, 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 Richie Z, I'm so sorry. Dos Maderas 5 plus 5. Dos Maderas is Spanish for two woods. The 5 plus 5, so good. 5 plus 3, absolute garbage. Damn. <laughs> And yes, Wally's too young for Whiskey Lock. I missed it by a few years. The 70s, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all, yeah, you guys are schooling us. Why are you guys watching us in the first place? We're millennials. Because they're all old. Actually, Steve's not that old. Steve's our age. Um, oh, and if you guys don't know already, we will be going to San Francisco. I'll be there on Friday. You'll be there on Saturday. And we're both going to be on Sunday. Saturday. And, yep, I'll be there Saturday so and Sunday. So if you guys Saturday. would like to see us... Please send us a DM. We'll love to meet you guys if you guys are there. If you guys are at the event, come say hi uh, and laugh at how tall Wally is compared to Charles. Because I mean, be I'm six feet hilarious. tall. It's not that tall. Oh, dude, I'm tiny. Steve, Steve, I just texted my text. I just responded. El Dorado rum. So El Dorado, I, their rum turns me off because I've never tried any of it. I've never heard anybody talk about it. You're talking about somebody swearing by it. And then literally the prices are stupid. Stupid like, high? It seems like they have one bottle it, stupid high they have one bottle under 100 bucks and then it, like their 12 year jumps over 100 dollars. and i'm like it's not scotch like i don't know man but some good rum dude it's always good well you know it it's crazy maybe their rum boom already happened and we just don't know about it because we just we're so you know in tune with our whiskey community that rums jumped up and we're like crap these prices are crazy but yeah. i have to admit though the scotch Milk whiskey society with their rum bottlings i was very surprised oh my gosh Wow. Five plus five is not too sweet. It's so Oloroso Sherry, dude. Get in those spices. Hey, Peter White's offering, Ooh, man. Share it yeah, with no, the community. Yeah, no, I'm not going to. I wouldn't turn down a bottle of it. It's yeah, good. I got some plantation one that's pretty good. Uh, but Wally's not a big fan, I don't think. I mean, it's probably why I don't like rice, though. That's probably why I like bourbon I so much more. It looks like that sweetness is so good. Spice is okay. If it's sherry, yeah. sherry spices get me, get me going. That's true. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Well, that was a topic. Thank you so much for participating. Um, this was actually a really good chat going around and stuff like that about the topic. So I, hopefully we can continue this going. Again, every Monday I send out a message on Instagram to show or to ask you guys about topics. We have a rolling list, right, Wally? I've shown him the list. So we have a rolling list of topics. So if you guys have placed a topic, you know, last week or whatever, it's still continuing. What? To answer the question that just went up, Habs just said, have you tried any Cuban rum? I have tried. Yeah, um, I, saw that. You posted I have. Like two. Yeah, I have that seven year something and I have a, a non-age statement of the same kind of rum. And both of them were. See, that's the thing. I think it just it's Cuban because you can't get it. Yeah, which is cool, but like if it doesn't taste good, it doesn't What's taste. What's funny good. is a lot of the rum companies came from Cuba and had to leave. So. I've really got to stop giving my honest opinions for these things. Oh wait, that'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much again, chat. You have been amazing this week, just like every other week. Um, Wally, we have to take our photo. Oh, you got the cooler one than I do. <laughs> these are all just gonna be these are all so empty oh, you have to wait i can just turn them sideways i'm just gonna you don't see these anymore <laughs> whoa you have a whole box of the 12s i should have grabbed a box of the uh <laughs> it's like how the did he get this this was about two years ago guys calm down at costco i should have grabbed a box of the um what is it with the tradition no what what's the stupid new one tradition no Contra What's it uh, Harmony? Harmony, that's it. Like they have, Harmony, Sweet Harmony? Like at my local Costco, they have cases. <laughs> yeah, next week on Rum Untitled. So we're going to talk about Oh, it. and if you guys uh, want to win a bottle, a free bottle of Hibiki Harmony, I heard Scotch and Sniff on Instagram is <laughs> having a giveaway. All you have to do is tag three people, and that's it. I don't even care if you follow me at this point, but you, you will because it's a good time. Yeah, follow him <laughs> on Scotch and Sniff. And make sure to check out our lives on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because it's going to be crazy amount of whiskey stuff coming. Hey, I really don't mean to belabor <laughs> this. All you guys who are talking about rum in the whatchamacallit, and Steve, I can't pick one up for you. I just need to go back. Um, a case. Get out of here. Uh, all you guys who are talking about rum, has anybody tried the Dos Madeiras Luxus? Luxus? It's like their top-of-the-line Dos Madeiras. Maybe you should hit some rum bloggers up. Is there any – is it – no, so I hit them up directly, but their English is so bad that they couldn't help me find a bottle. Damn. And, like, it's just it's it was crazy talk. Uh, no, it was super broken English. Oh. Like, like painfully broken. Not even like, I, like, I couldn't. Broken? Yeah, exactly. And I was like, hey, where can I find this bottle? But it's the Luxus, I think. It's like, it really is their top-of-the-line bottle. Huh. Eh, nobody knows. Right. Eh, somebody posted one day. Somebody hit me up on Instagram. See you guys. Oh, 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 Cheers. oh, deuces, deuces, deuces. Cheers. Hashtag ad. Cheers. <laughs>